Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Leif World and today we're going to be doing a nine tips for better beats video. This is going to be an amazing video to be able to go and show you guys how you can go and improve your beats just by following these tips. Um, specifically, we'll be talking about, you know, higher quality sounds, better melodies, uh, stuff with mixing and beat mixing, using reference tracks and listening to other music and stuff like that, avoiding to overmix and all of those other things. Uh, that's kind of what we're going to be doing today. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first up, I want to talk about using high quality instruments that are just using stock plugins within your DAW. If you're new to making beats, this may be more of a struggle for you to be able to get better sounding beats just because you don't have as much high quality, more intricate and more complex sounds to be able to go and pull from. Um, a lot of stock plugins usually have more simplistic sounds, either way, the literal quality or the actual quality of the instrument, like the tone and what the instrument is exactly. So what you can do actually to improve the quality of your beats is simply go and start getting online plugins from off the internet, external plugins that you can go and scan within your DAW. For example, I'm using FL Studio here, so I'll go and show how to quickly scan for plugins, but mainly I would like to recommend these right here. So this is Complete Start by Native Instruments. Native Instruments is now owned by Isotope, but this is an amazing set of plugins and high quality instruments that you're able to go and access for free. This is all for free, so I'd highly recommend getting this. You have the Analog Dreams, Ethereal Earth libraries, and it's definitely a very great starting point um, for beginners. Um, also, you can go and get free contact libraries such as this one right here. I'm going to leave a bunch of free contact libraries in the description below so you can kind of just go as a beginner just start from a native instruments perspective but you can also go and get paid plugins this one right here is a hundred dollars people have got it on for sale for about ten dollars before by ear music tech if you want to pay a bit more money I would recommend getting this um, expand Two is a great virtual instrument that I've used in many of my beats to create you know kind of trap beats and stuff like that I think it's pretty good um, you can also go and use serum so next I want to go and talk about doing beat mixes with volume so volume is very important to be able to go and I mean like you know 90% of or basically all of music is about volume and so when you're going and making your beat mixes you just want to really be concerned about with the faders because once you have um, all of your faders adjusted and they all sound good with the vocals and the vocals sit in uh, pretty good with the um, uh, sounds that you have without any EQ or anything like that or any special or delay or anything like that besides the creative effects they use for the beat. 50% um, of your mix is already done. So if you're just going and mixing your beats, if you're just a beat maker, um, a, a really great way to be able to go and do this is practicing levels on each of your beats. So once you make a beat, make sure that all of the levels for each of the instruments is correct. So you can go and kind of blend the instruments together as much as possible. All right, that sounds pretty good. And right here we have all of the different individual channels at a certain um, level. As you can see, they're very specifically aligned in a certain way to be able to go and have them all fit in pretty well with each other. So once you have all of that figured out, you're basically done with your beat mix. So to get a great quality mix is to be able to go and adjust the volume between each sound which has its own timber, its own tonal balance profile, or in other words, what it looks like in the EQ, if it has a lot of highs or mids or lows. And once you adjust the volume or the relationship between all of those little factors, between all those little elements, once you're able to find, okay, which instruments with these timbers work better when they're louder, and then which instruments work better when they're softer, and which instruments work better when they're medium, then you can kind of go and start to get the basic foundation of your mix, which is going to be already 50% done. So once you're able to go and master the relationship between instruments like that, um, it's great. Now, this tip is going to take practice it's not like it's going to be a super easy tip or anything to be able to just go and pick up right away, but I'd highly recommend going and messing around with your levels to make sure your beat sounds the best it can as far as volume goes. And you can also mess around with velocity or panning notes as well. I have linked some videos below for doing your levels, which I thought were pretty good um, in the description. Next, I want to go and talk about avoiding over mixing. So when you're going and making a beat mix, if you're starting to use EQ and stuff like that, it's very quickly, easily, it's very quickly, it's very easy to quickly ruin a mix with just doing too many EQ moves when you don't know what you're doing necessarily. It's very easy to go and screw up a mix when you don't know what you're doing necessarily with a bunch of EQ. So for example, if I have um, this instrument right here, this instrument has a lot of um, definitely covers up as a lot of highs right here, maybe a bit of mids and stuff like that. I've cut out a lot of the bass and the low mids as well. But say we have this instrument and then this instrument right here. So for example, if we just have these two instruments, instead of just EQing um, our mix, which is easier to be able to over mix when you start EQing versus, in my experience at least, than doing your levels. Uh, if we just go and turn up this instrument right here, 
we might be able to go and make an inference. Okay, this instrument is much louder than that one. Maybe we can go in with the EQ and then take down the low mids. Now, this might not be the best idea because what you could do is, instead of going and taking down the mids, taking down the energy, that valuable energy of that instrument right here, to be able to kind of make it stop interfering with this one, instead we could just go and drag down the volume. And now we're keeping that low mid energy, which is great for a fuller mix, instead of having it being washed down, say if we did like, we took out the low mids here, if we pri prioritized EQ before just adjusting the simple, you know, factor, which is the volume or the faders. That's just one example that you could avoid over mixing with EQ. Another example is when you're going and making EQ moves, it's easy to get very lost with going and making EQ moves here and then making other EQ moves that are over here, which you may have not need to do in the first place because these EQ moves are here. You might be sacrificing or sufficing for bad EQ moves over here. So for example, if I just start EQing um, over here and I have a bunch of highs, maybe I want to bring out the highs more, then I notice, okay, there's too much highs in my mix. And then I, you know, I identify maybe it's over in these instruments over here. Then I start going and taking down the highs from here and then now we're just going and making eq moves that are just sufficing for other bad ones that are have been done here what i would probably do to avoid this is i would just go and start making eqs that are very subtle so for example right here we just have a negative one db difference or negative 1.5 it's just not that it's not that deep or anything like that it's just very subtle because when you're going and mixing for multiple speaker systems say you want your beat to be more compatible and mono and stuff like that you want to make sure that your eq moves aren't too drastic because you can take away too much energy of the sound which is valuable and then also um, if you take up or if you take out too much uh, energy of the sound it can sound washed out and if you make too big of EQ moves or cuts and stuff like that it may not sound the best on different speaker systems if you make too drastic of you know EQ moves because you know uh, when you're going and making EQ moves EQ is a very great great way to be able to go and make a mix very compatible on many speaker systems and sound great but it's also a very easy way to mess it up since you could be making a bunch of EQ moves so for example we could have some EQ moves over here so right here say I just start messing around with this low mids thing right here and then I decide ah, the whole mix kind of sounds a bit to um, washed out so maybe what I want to do I want to do is, is that I want to go over here. Maybe I just go mindlessly to some other instruments over here that I think are cool instruments. I might not be paying attention to which EQ move I made over here, uh, which was to take out the low mids. Say I boost the low mids over here somewhere here. And then I start kind of doing that same pattern. You'll start to notice that if you do more EQing, you can kind of get lost and make a bunch of extra problems or, you know, accidental problems for yourself. So anyways, that's just some tips that I would have for over mixing and make sure that you can kind of go and make your mix as compatible as possible with making small EQ moves. So next I'm going to go and talk about creating creative melodies. So, you know, this is just kind of from my own personal experience here. This is kind of my own philosophy that I have for making, you know, melodies and stuff. But uh, hopefully I can go and kind of fit it into the video and make it sort of, you know, understandable <laughs> at least. Um, so let me just kind of go and explain my reasoning behind what I'm trying to do here with creating my melody. So I like to create my melodies where I just kind of go and sound out the sounds before I just start clicking on the piano roll. Um, I like to go and start, you know, kind of your mind's eye, if you will, if you kind of remember that from driver's ed, using your mind's eye to, to go and do something that's not necessarily related to what I'm talking about here, I guess it could be. Um, but the main thing, you just want to go and sound out melodies before you even put them down on the piano roll. So you can kind of get, you can kind of take charge of, uh, of what you're doing instead of just going and picking random notes. You can totally get better at it by just going and practice over and over again by doing melodies by kind of just clicking around and stuff. But you could also go and sound it out without going to your mind for any necessary or necessarily any chords, at least at first, um, you know, with past and future. Try to go into the present moment as much as possible, kind of Buddha mind mindfulness mode here and see if you can go and create something like da, na, 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 and then da, na, na. so i just came up with two melodies right there that i would go and layer with fl keys right here so let me just go and do that da, na, 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 na. aren't the same melodies that I did uh, like a second ago or something like that, but that's fine. 
So can you see how I'm kind of going and sounding out the notes before I even put them down? I'm kind of going in, in my mind's eye or kind of using my mind creatively in the sense that I'm going and, you know, putting out something that is not of just a major or minor chord that you kind of start out with and you just kind of go and do a uh, augmented seventh and stuff like that. Instead of kind of going by patterns that you've done before in other beats, see if you can go and create something completely new from scratch, like as far as the melody goes. So next I'm going to go and talk about using reference tracks. So if you're going using a reference track for your YouTube video or your song and stuff like that, you want to make sure that you can go and um, first of all, download it and import it into your session. And then also just start listening to music. Start going and listening to some other music and see if you can get inspiration. See if you can get inspiration from other people, their beats, their vocals. If you do vocals on your beats, if you just do vocals and you're a rapper, you're not a beat maker, who knows? But just go and start messing around with other tracks and see if you can kind of go and listen and get some inspiration from other people. So, for example, I really like this new Russian guy that I found. His name is Shiny. Um, and I, I really liked this kind of thing that he did here. So it sounds pretty cool. Uh, I really like it, actually. So um, it's a cool sound that he developed, and I definitely think that would be awesome if I can go and import that into my session and then kind of go and create a melody towards that, which you could totally do. So if you want to do this, you probably just have to go and copy the link here. A few moments later. So then once you've done that, you could just go and simply put this in here and start making a melody that could be in the key of it or just really listen to it and, you know, use it for um, inspiration in general. You can also go and use this. You can go and put down your melody, for example, right here um, or your whole track that you have, and you can go and start comparing it. So pretend this melody is like already done and stuff. I have instruments and everything. Um, you can go and listen to the track and then kind of go and listen to yours and see if you can go and create the mix um, or using your levels that I described earlier, EQ moves, see if you can make it similar to that so it sounds more professional since they are the ones that already know how to do the mixing and you don't, you're still learning. Um, you can use reference tracks to learn from people. So next I want to go and talk about using high quality drum samples. So usually finding high quality drum samples is not that hard at all. Um, people go and share drum samples by simply just going and sharing them and people download them. And you know, when you go and share something and download something, you don't lose the quality of that audio file. So no matter how many times someone has kind of, you know, took in that sample from another drum kit and put into another one that you've downloaded from them or off of Reddit and stuff like that, don't, don't worry about it because completely all these drum samples are going to be high quality since no one is going and actually any coding of the audio files or exporting them really at all. So I'm just putting this in here just to be able to go and give you guys sort of maybe a quick source of where to get good drum kits, which is r slash drum kits on Reddit. So if you go to reddit.com slash r slash drum kits, you can go and see here that we have tons of different free, by the way, just stuff that you can go and download. There's many people that have paid drum kits too as well, but there are a lot of really great drum kits that you could just go and get that could be by different artists or from albums or recreations from albums. Um, and you can just go and get these for free. So I'd highly recommend going to Reddit. It's just easily the best way to be able to do it. Um, there might even be a leaked drum kit that you might be able to get. Who knows? Um, but right here, as we can see here, um, we have tons of different options, and these are always going to be high quality. So it's not going to be a struggle or an issue. Just wanted to put this in the video just to let everyone know. So next I'm going to go and talk about going and using automation in your playlist and mixers. This is definitely a very helpful thing that you're able to do. So when you're going and making a beat, you can use automation within the playlist and the mixer. So let me just go and give you some examples of what I mean by the mixer and the playlist. So let me just go and drag in this beat here that I made. Let me just go and play it quickly. So if we go and see here, we can take the beat and we can just go and start pasting it in the playlist. And as we can see here, we have a bunch of patterns and stuff like that. And then once we're done, we can just kind of go and expand the view here. And as we can see, we can start layering out the beat. As we can see here, we can start going and putting automation within your beats. And if you don't know how to do this, it's quite simple. You can just go and start animating knobs. The most common uh, automation that you're probably going to be doing is a fade in or fade out to your song, which all you have to do is to automate a knob or to be able to go and animate it to create some form of automation in your song as you right click on it and do create automation clip and then you can go and take the pencil tool and start going and shaping the uh, shape of the automation clip so let me just go and hold shift and right click to go and right click on this without going and changing um, the level of it and then we can just go and start dragging this down and we can create a simple four bar outro 
Awesome. So once we're done with our two bar outro, I mean, um, and so as you can see here, once we are done with that, uh, we have created some form of automation. You can do this with many things. For example, you can go to the master track and do a low pass filter. So if we just do this and we can go and animate um, knob right here that controls this, we can just do create automation clip and then we can go and do this. So yeah, that's basically another way that you can do an outro. And that's what it looks like. Another way you can go and start messing around with your beats is in the mixer. You can do automation with extra plugins. So for example, if I just go and take a plugin right here, this is what I've done in some of my beats before, or I'll just show right here. Um, I have went and made this gross beat animated. Um, this one's actually linked to a controller. So let me go over that first. So right here, we can just go and take a Fruity Peak controller and we can measure the peaks of a sound wave. Let me just go and show you how you can go and animate knob. So right here, if we just start to go and click on edit events, we can right click on any button animate it. We can see here that I have went and drawn with the pencil tool, or in this case, actually I did the record button. But what I did, what, what I've done is, is that I've went and uh, shaped this knob to be able to start moving and going and uh, changing the phase. So if we just go and take this off, let me just go and solve the sound to make the example more obvious. As we can see here, we've added a lot more animation or groove to it and stuff, and it sounds a bit cooler. So now it's kind of fading in and out because of the phaser. And it's animating. These knobs are animating. So it makes the sound a bit more interesting. And then right there, if we can combine that with other sounds, we can kind of make it a cool folding effect. Um, we can have multiple sounds having that same type of phaser on there, and it kind of go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, it, that makes sense, I guess. So, yeah, that's basically it. That's one way that you can do it through events. Uh, another way you can also do events without having to go and draw with the pencil tool is right-clicking on your um, record button and right-clicking automation and deselecting everything else. And then once you're done with that, you can actually go and uh, do notes and automation right here. And then we can just go and hit play and we can do any knob we want. And then right here, as we can see, if we turn it off, it starts to being animated. And we can just go and undo that if we want. And then right here to do to delete it, we just do delete and issue value. That's a great way that you could do that. You can also access all of that stuff through right here. If we just go to the uh, control window, as we can see, we can access everything that has been animated. We can also go and start side chaining things as well. So if we just go to any instrument right here, for example, let me just go and see which ones I side chain in this beat if I did any. Well, in this case, I have taken the um, rhythm or the peaks from, let's see, which insert is that? I'm not sure. Oh, it's uh, insert one. And so we've taken this with our reverb plugin right here. We have Lux for this allows for a side chain. As we can see here, if we enable this, we have our reverb working here. And as we can see here, so right here, the lines that are going to be the, um, is going to be uh, insert one or the instrument or the peaks of insert one is going to be this blue line right here. And now we have the rhythm of this blue of, you know, going up and down on the reverb of this instrument right here. And then right here, I've done it with the decay instead of the wet, but I can totally do the wet. And right here, as we can see, now the reverb is moving up and down based on this instrument over here, moving up and down instead of this one itself, which is pretty interesting. And you can start messing around with side chaining different channels to each other to be able to go and have them kind of duck when each of them are playing um, and kind of see what happens. So next I'm gonna go talk about structuring your song. So I'm just gonna go and give a couple images up here of what a structured song actually looks like, but I'm just gonna go over one of my beats. I usually don't do this to be honest, <laughs> uh, but right here I do have a bit of structuring for this one song that I have on SoundCloud. So right here it's called Rapid Facts. And as we can see, we just have the um, uh, intro being just four bars or not even two bars. Um, and what I'm doing here is instead of just going and putting Instead of just going and putting every instrument right here just at the beginning like this, instead I just... So for example, if I just had this track right here just starting off with my vocals and there's no intro, there's no sort of thing without the vocals and stuff like that, we can see here that it just kind of... It could be... It doesn't have to be. It could be kind of boring. So instead of being kind of put up an intro right here, that's kind of just giving an intro sort of an introduction to the beat itself. Um, and then the vocals start playing. So this would be something called song structuring. And so we can go and structure our song and take out certain instruments. So for example, right here, I've taken 
taken out. Um, uh, during this verse right here, as we can see, I can show you that we have, um, or this part of this verse right here, we can see I've taken out the kick and um, just the kick actually really. Uh, I've took out the 808 as well. But what I've done is, is that I've created some form of rhythm or movement in the track, a sign that the track is sort of going to the next singer or it's going to the next lyric, it's going to the verse, it's going to the next chorus. Um, in this case, it's not necessarily going to the next chorus, but it is going to a cool part that I said. It's going to, in my opinion, it's kind of a cool little verse that I did. So I took out the kick to kind of give it some uh, 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 and then the kick is eventually going to come after that and then, you know, which is going to be the beat drop of the chorus. So right here, let me just go and you what that looks like right there so it sounds cool because there's you know the 808 is there but there's no kick that's driving the whole beat awesome so right there as you can see we have a pretty cool i just put a quick audio clip uh, this is totally fine too to be able to go and put audio clips of certain um instruments here that aren't just in the channel rack or in this instance it's the kick because uh, i didn't have a kick in this pattern here i could have done um i could have made a unique pattern as well but that's totally fine um so right here i've just put in a kick awesome Awesome. So basically go check that uh, song out on SoundCloud if you want to. Uh, by the time you're watching this video, it might be kind of old. I might have more song songs on there, but whatever. That's basically it. So you can kind of go and see that I've created some form right here. You have the outro. I've taken out certain parts of my song or the beat and I have done it according to the vocals. My final tip is that practice makes perfect. Um, really just practice is going to be the main ninth tip that I would like to be able to go and show you guys to make your beats better overall. Is that just practice every day. I have done five beats per day while doing school in the whole month of April. And I'm doing four beats per day right now in the month of May. And I'm doing two songs per day. So just do practice, practice, practice and see if you get better. And that's basically it, guys. I'll see you later and peace out.